Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we are live. I hope everyone is ready to be interactive today because today might be the, one of the most interactive shows that I do usually about once a year. What you guys are going to be seeing here on today's show, we're going to be doing our normal news and rumors like we have. I got six trending topics that I'm going to go ahead and talk about. On top of that, we're going to go ahead and do two mailbags, but you know what? We're going to do a fan-led mock draft, a mock draft done by Raider Nation, by the people who are watching the show today. I had a lot of people say, hey, man, I love the mock draft that you did yesterday with Raider Cody, Honcho, Graphic, and all those guys. So guess what? Now you and I, we're going to do a mock draft together. But here's my question, and today's theme is all about putting more power in the hands of everyone watching. So what should be the first segment that we do today? Do you want me to do the fan-led mock draft? Go ahead and type D. If you want to see the latest rumors going on around the silver and black, then I want you to go ahead and type R. So essentially, I'm going to let you guys make the decisions on the mock draft. So either the latest rumors or we're going to talk about the draft. So personally, I wanted to do the draft first because I was like, you know what? We're going to switch it up a little bit, but I am going to let you guys decide. And it's funny. I'm actually seeing quite a bit of R's coming in right now. So let me know what y'all are thinking here. We got Mr. Clean, presidential role, revered Raider, Youngblood, Raider fan, Fernando Marquez, Juan Hernandez, King Higgins. All type in there are. Captain Rex is going to go D for draft. Dylan Eggers. We got Y.O. Raider, LaToya, Jesse V, Y.O., Zachariah Clark, Juan uh, M. Rumors. Anthony Allen type in draft. So you guys can keep on getting your votes in here. I told my team that we would do draft. I put my money that you guys would want draft first, so we might have to switch up the show a little bit here. We'll see what ends up happening. As a friendly reminder, if you guys go ahead and send in a super chat, we will also show that up on screen. So shout out to Felipe. I appreciate the super. And also, if you guys want to get in those hashtag Raiders, you can also do that. What up, Felipe? Who, one player, you think is a diamond in the rough? In terms of the NFL draft this year, my diamond in the rough, it was actually, and it started out as Marcus Jones was a player that I had as a diamond in the rough. Trevor Penning was another player that I had early on. Abraham Lucas, same thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and say if there's a player that's late in the draft, I'll say Dare Rosenthal. He's the offensive tackle from Kentucky. He definitely has some off-the-field issues. However, he's a really, really talented player. In terms of Tariq Woolen was one of my sleepers, and then he started getting picked uh, picked up big time. Somebody said Brian Robinson. I'm not actually not that big of a fan of Brian Robinson. What up, Raider Nation? Appreciate you guys watching. It seems like they want rumors first, so I'm going to ask Sam if it's possible, and if it's possible, he's telling me yeah. So you guys want rumors first, then we'll go ahead and we'll do rumors first. All right, y'all, so how about this? If you want to go ahead and make some picks today in today's fan-led mock draft, I want you to go ahead and spam me down in the comments section right now. We're going to do picks between people who are just tuning in, and we're also going to do picks between people who are subscribers only. So if you haven't hit that sub button yet, please go ahead and do so. I, it would mean a lot to me. We got 453 people watching, 107 likes. So shout out to Twin Big Z, Kevin Rogers. You guys are always watching. Dylan Raul, B. Ray Lewis. Lewis, what's up, man? How you doing? It's been a while since we've chatted. We got Dylan again. Keep on typing me. Rex Randall, Lightning Gamer. Shout out to the real ones right now. Felipe Mendia, Patrick B. Uh-oh, Patrick B's in the chat. This could get wild. Juicehead, CJ, CSR, Robert, Pedro. We got Phil, LI, Raider, 312. Oh, wow, Chuck Norris. I'm, uh, I'm a little starstruck right now. All right, we got one more super chat coming in. And it's from Marquez. Love the show and your interaction with the nation. Well, the show is built on the backs of interacting with the nation. So if anything, I should say thank you all to y'all because you're the reason why our show is the way that it is. Like, I wouldn't be able to come up here and just give shout outs or imagine a show where you guys don't type in anything, right? I mean, I'm here on YouTube. We're also live on Rumble. And if I had to rely on my Rumble audience right now, I'd be a little bit disappointed. So if you guys want a special shout out, remember, we are also on Rumble as well. All right, so who do you guys want the Raiders to draft 
this year. And I'm not just talking about a pick 86. Let's also look at 126. Let's look at 164, 165, and 227. Is there a certain player that you're like, this would be really good value here? Because when you go back and you look at a lot of the other drafts, the first round's been the round that we've struggled in, but they found some good diamonds in the rough. Max Crosby, Hunter Renfro, great examples of that later on in the round. So shout out to Ibrahim, 13 over on Rumble. Much love to you, brother. But is there a player that you're like, this is a guy the Raiders need to go out and get? We got uh, Eric Hood says me, as in him. So Eric, I don't know what position you play, but let me know. Boomer Raider says Jamison Williams. The only way Jamison Williams is if he falls down the draft because of the injury concerns, and then the Raiders go ahead and trade up for him. He ain't falling to the third round. Williams, uh, the defensive tackle from Tennessee. Thornton from Baylor, really athletic wide receiver there. Daniel Falele, the offensive tackle from Minnesota from Untouchable Raider. James Cook, the brother of Dalvin Cook, running back from Jeff Garcia. We have the best available offensive tackle from Dave Steele, fair enough. Carson Strong from Cameron Sproul, interesting. Who is a good speedy wide receiver we could get from Terrence Minor? I'm not going to go super speedy wide receiver. I'm a big fan of Sky Moore. I don't know if he's going to fall to round three. Uh, who do you want the Raiders to draft? Well, well, we'll go through some names here. There we go. Raiders Hill says Sky Moore. We got Dylan Parman, the guard from Memphis, and then Calvin Austin. He's a speedy wide receiver. Not only are we going to talk about the draft, we're also going to talk about free agency here. And if you are just tuning in, this is the part of the show that I like to call Build Up, where we're going to let more of the viewers come in. We're going to let the audience literally build up. And then we will get into the latest news and rumors. And then we will get into our fan-led mock draft. So if you could only sign one of the players that you see on screen right now, who would it be? Would it be the Honey Badger type TF for Tyron Matthew? What about Odell Beckham Jr. type OBJ? Daryl Williams, DW, JC Treader, JT. Yesterday on our YouTube community poll, I asked this exact question. And about 65% of the votes came in for the Honey Badger. 30% came in for Daryl Williams. And then the other 5% came in for OBJ, JC, Treader, and for other. But I am genuinely curious. If you could only sign one player, who would it be? And coming up here on today's show, I'm going to tell you who that one player would be if I was running the Raiders organization. So Phil and the boy, they're going to go with Daryl Williams. OBJ from Juicehead. Uh, we got the Honey Badger from Patrick B. Simon E's LI Raider 312. Daryl Williams is coming in here again from La Lacefeg. Lori Lamp, I love Lamp. Type in T for J.C. Treader. The next topic, or one of the topics coming up here, is going to be around safety position. And there's been a lot of conversation around Jonathan Abram, not only because of the fifth-year option, but when the Raiders went out and they signed Deron Harmon, I said that this was one of the best, one of the most sneaky moves that Las Vegas made during the entire free agency period. So we're actually going to debate who's the better safety for the Raiders this upcoming season. And there's going to be a lot of different discussion on this one, which I totally get, which I am absolutely ready for. So if you're over on Rumble, get your votes in right now. Type 24 for Jonathan Abram. And then type 30 for Deron Harmon. Yes, Harmon is number 30. Pronounced Ibera. Ibera. Did I get that right? Ibera Man 13. Thanks, Big Mitchell. Wow, I haven't been called Big Mitch in quite some time. Um, <laughs> Ibera. I think that's right. Yeah, Ibera. So, all right, what do you want? 24 or do you want 30? Who's the better safety for the Raiders? I'm actually pretty surprised that the amount of the votes coming in right now are for Deron Harmon, which I know a lot of y'all aren't that crazy about Abram because of his coverage lack thereof. So coming up here, guys, we got that Raiders fan-led mock draft. We got a mailbag coming up, so use hashtag Raiders, or you can go ahead and super chat. And then we're going to get into the latest news and rumors. But I did ask you guys at the top of the show, what do you want first, rumors or the fan-led mock? Y'all told me rumors, so that's how we're going to start this show off. We're going to get into the latest news and rumors. Then we're going to go to a mailbag. Then we're going to go to the fan-led mock draft. Then we're going to wrap this thing up with a, another mailbag. So if you guys want to get those questions in, use hashtag Raiders or Super Chat. And sit down, buckle up. Today's going to be an interactive show. Coming up right now here on the Raiders Report, the latest news and rumors.
Man, love those just win babies. All right, Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report with Mitchell Rance here. And coming up, I got a six-pack of Raiders rumors. And it has been a long time since I've said that. And when we first started the Raiders Report, we would do a certain style of show. And you're going to see the style of show that I'm talking about. It's going to be six rumors around the most trending topics on the internet right now. And the first one is this, man. Should the Raiders go out right now and get... Daryl Williams, the offensive tackle who played for the Buffalo Bills last year? Absolutely, they should. I'm going to go ahead and give this one four just win babies. Believe it, baby. And if you were to ask me, Mitch, who is the number one free agent that the Raiders should go out and get right now? Here's my answer. It's Daryl Williams. The biggest need for this team is still right tackle. I'm sorry. I don't trust Jermaine Illuminor, Brandon Parker, whoever they're going to decide to put on the right tackle position. Williams is clearly the top offensive tackle on the market. And when I see Morgan Moses get about $5.5 million, okay, I'd be more than okay going out and pay Daryl Williams $6 million, $7 million because I see him getting six or seven. The Honey Badger's probably going to get nine, maybe eight, 11, 12 million a year. So you then still have extra money to take care of a bigger need. So what I did on Twitter before the show started is I went on at Mitchell Rent 365 and I pinned a tweet that said, Hey, Raiders, go sign Daryl Williams. And if you guys agree with that, Go to my pinned tweet right now. It's going to be in the comments. It's going to be in the description of today's video. Click that link. Click that retweet button. And if you want to go ahead and also get this hashtag going, I want to get this hashtag going. Daryl to Las Vegas. You put out a tweet. You put that hashtag. You at me. We're going to start sharing them on social media. I want Daryl Williams in silver and black. Now, the next graphic that you're about to see come up on screen are Daryl Williams PFF grades. I did not include 2018 because he wasn't healthy that season. So what you see over here are is every year of his career, he was drafted in 2015, that he played over 500 snaps on the offensive line. In 2016, he played 625 right tackle snaps. That was actually like 95% of the snaps he took that year. 67.5 overall grade. All right, pretty good. 2017, played over 1,000 snaps, 77.2 overall. Essentially, 98% of the snaps that season came at right tackle. In 2019, probably his worst year, he played only 44 snaps at right tackle, and he was at left tackle, left guard. They moved him all over the offensive line of Carolina, and he didn't play well. So then he goes over to the Buffalo Bills, has his career year at 79.4 overall PFF grade, played over 1,000 snaps at right tackle. So then Buffalo goes, oh, wait, well, maybe we'll just try to kick him into right guard. Not that he played bad, but he played more snaps at right guard than he did right tackle, and then he didn't have as good of a year. What I've seen is if he plays at right tackle, he's one of the best right tackles in the National Football League. So if you really want to tell me and the rest of Raider Nation that this is going to be your offensive line, it makes me nervous. I don't care if you go out and get all these amazing players. I don't care if Derek Carr is supposed to be this amazing quarterback. If you can't block, if you can't win the battle of the trenches, it doesn't matter. So, bingo. I want to make this happen. So if you guys could, let's get Daryl Williams into the silver and black. Let's get him into Las Vegas. Let's make him the right tackle for the Raiders. Now, sure, you're probably going to have to wait until after the draft and then after June 1st because of some salary cap issues. But if Daryl Williams is available on June 1st, I'm telling y'all right now, I'm going to try to do everything I can in my human power to make sure he's a Raider. Now, to make sure you guys never miss anything going on around the silver and black, to make sure that you keep yourself up to date with everything going on in the offseason. It's going to be a crazy offseason. Hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Now, I love when people try to be the first one into a show and they're chatting down Noti Gang. I just want you guys to know I see it. I appreciate it. So what I did is I took the video from yesterday on April 18th, and here were the top five people, the very first comments. I don't know if anybody can beat Untouchable Raider 1960. He always seems to be that dude. But shout out to him. Shout out to Junior, Raiderville 13, London Monsieur, and then S.A. Roderick. I appreciate you guys. Y'all are real ones. And if you want to shout out on a future show, turn on those subs, y'all. And notification bells. All right, let's go to the next story here. It's around Jonathan Abram. Jonathan Abram is not going to be starting for the Las Vegas Raiders this upcoming season. I'm going to get ballsy here, and I'm going to go ahead and give this one three just win babies. I think it's pretty likely. 
When I give something three just win babies, it means I believe it's a 75% chance of happening. And the article is from SB Nation where they're breaking down all these things about Abram and all the moves and him potentially not playing. And I get it, man. He's got his, He's up for a fifth-year option. He's not going to get it. He was a first-round draft pick, 27 overall, 2019. But Vegas went out and signed to Ron Harmon in free agency. And Patrick Graham's defense... It requires versatility. It requires you to be flexible. It also requires your safeties to be able to cover. So with all of that going into it, I know Jonathan Abram can't cover. He can't. It's just a simple fact. He brings energy. He's going to be a good special teams player. If you need someone to stop the run, he can do it. But I've seen now for over two years that Abram is a very bad covered safety. He had 68 targets last season, gave up 54 catches, five touchdowns, a quarterback rating of 105.2. Like, a quarterback rating that high is one of the best in the National Football League. All right, well, what about the year before that? 30 targets, 21 catches, two touchdowns, and then a quarterback rating of 124.3. What I saw this past year was when he was on the field, teams targeted him. And when he wasn't on the field, the Raiders' defense was better. It's a fact. The Raiders' defense was better when Jonathan Abram wasn't out there. So let me know, y'all, who's the better safety for this Raiders' defense? If you still think that it's Jonathan Abram, you're like, Mitch, you're too tough on him. That's fine. It's all good. Type 24. If you think it's Deron Harmon, I want you to go ahead and type 30. I'm going to go ahead and type my 30. I know Harmon is a better fit for Graham's defense. I also know that there's a reason why Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler went out and got Harmon. It's because he played with that New England team from 2013 to 2019. Then he actually tried to go with Matt Patricia. More New England connections with the Lions. Didn't work out. Then he went to Atlanta. But I've seen Harmon play. He can be that solid covered safety. And for the Raiders, with what they're going to do this year, you need two safeties that can cover. And then if, if Abram wants to be somebody up in the box closer to the line of scrimmage, that's totally fine. But I'm going to make a bet right now that Deron Harmon plays more snaps this season than Jonathan Abram. Let's go to the next story coming up here on the Raiders Report. Remember, I got a six-pack of rumors. We got two down. We got four more to go. No fifth-year options coming up. The players that are qualified for fifth-year options, Cleveland Furrow, Jonathan Abram, Josh Jacobs. I'm going to say this one's a coin flip, so if you guys want to call it in the air, you can go ahead and do so. I'm going to give this one two just win babies. I don't have a great answer for you because the only player that is even has a chance to get this is Josh Jacobs. Your fifth-year options, why the NFL decided to do this, has to be in May 2nd at 4 p.m. Eastern time. I don't get why you, you, for a fifth-year option, the player can't even play in his fourth year before you give him the option. Doesn't make sense to me. But this is what I do know. When I look at the fifth-year option numbers, I'm not going to give Cleveland for 11.5 million. I hope Cleveland has a great year this year. I really do. Not going to give 11.5. Jacobs at 8.03, maybe. Jonathan Abram at 7.9. No, I mean, the only person that I would even consider it for is Josh Jacobs. But even that, I personally wouldn't do it because I don't see the point of going out and paying a running back who has injury issues this much money in his fifth year. Is Jacobs a good running back? Yes. But I also know running back is an easy position to be able to go ahead and replace. So if you guys are looking for even more exclusive content, if you like the Raiders report, I also know this, you're going to love what we have over on local. So all I want you guys to do is become a member. Becoming a member is 100% free over on locals. How do you do it? You go to the link that you see below, download the app, and then you're ready to rock. RaidersReport.Locals.com is how you do it. And I want to give some shout-outs to the people who are becoming members. And shout-out to Tom FR 34 shout-out to Raider Rob 78 Giovanni 12 I also told them to shout out their area codes, so you'll see why that's funny here in a second. Super Raider 831, go figure, from 831. Def Jasper, um, that's a zip code, homie, but it's all good. I still appreciate it. Adam Jones, great baseball player. Nathan, 7353. All we're trying to do here is show you all that I see and I appreciate everyone who's a member over on Local. So if you want a shout out on a future Raiders show, become a member. It's free. And then if you want even more exclusive content, you can become a supporter. Raidersport.locals.com. Let's go to the next story here, and it's around Hunter Renfro. Is he going to be the next Raider that gets a contract extension? This one's three just win babies, and I'm going to go ahead and say it's probably even closer, like 80-85%, because he's got one year left on his deal, salary cap hit of $2.62 million, and he's coming off a career year. Not only that, 
Hunter Renfro is an elite, and let me say this again, elite route runner, one of the best in the National Football League, and I'm not just saying this because he's a white receiver. I'm saying this because I've seen Josh McDaniels' offenses. If you can be an elite route runner in a Josh McDaniels offense with an accurate quarterback, you're going to excel. And Hunter Renfro might not ever put up 100 catches again. He might not. He might not ever get over 1,000 yards again. But you know what? His ability to pick up clutch first downs, his ability to be just a reliable target, which realistically, for him to be our third target on our offense, that's incredible. So Hunter Renfro deserves that contract extension. And he was a player that I talked about a few, I guess, months at this point, and my top candidates to get the extension. When I look at all the Raiders' contracts from top to bottom, there's only three players that really pop up into my mind that I'm like, okay, they could be the next one to get a contract extension. It's Hunter Renfro at number one. Darren Waller does have two years left, but the rumors around him wanting a contract extension or wanting a new contract, they are legitimate. And then Denzel Perriman, he's got one year left on his deal. But if I'm a team and I'm going to go like, all right, I want to try to make Derek Carr happy. I want to try to make Hunter Renfro happy. How do you do that? You go ahead and give him a contract extension. And I would try to do it now because the longer and longer you wait, the more and more money Renfro is going to end up racking up. So after looking at some of the contracts this past year and then looking at some of the past deals that I've seen and then trusting my gut because I do believe that the chat sports team and I, we've done a phenomenal job getting close to these extensions. I'm going to go ahead and say Renfro gets a three-year deal, and it's going to be very similar to tied in with Derek Carr. The total amount is 36.9, which is an average of 12.3 million. That's essentially what uh, DJ Chark got when he signed with the Lions. Guaranteed million, 21.0. That's essentially what Sterling Shepard got when he got his deal. So his new contract would look like this. Four years, 39.5 million, which is an average of 9.88 million a year, and then you get 21 guaranteed. This deal makes a lot of sense for Renfro, and I know some people are going to like, wait, if Christian Kirk's getting, don't look at Christian Kirk's contract. Look at other slot receivers, other number threes in the offense, and I believe that Hunter Renfro, if he was offered this, he would absolutely go ahead and take it. So guys, let me know, and I know what your answer is going to be on this one. Everybody wants Hunter Renfro around, and you should type E for extend. You absolutely should. He is a phenomenal player that fits everything that you're hoping for in a Raider. So yes, go ahead and type your... I'm not even going to say P for best because you shouldn't do it. E, extend Hunter Renfro. Let's go to the next one here. And I already forget how to pronounce his name. Gadecki. Yeah, so guys, I create weird things in my head how to, how to pronounce names. And I think of this one. You remember the old Yankees baseball player, Hideki Matsui? Well... Should we go ahead and take Luke Gadecki at pick number 86? Mel Kuyper Jr. released his latest mock draft over on ESPN, and he had the Ra Raiders taking Gadecki. Well, guess what? I'm going to go ahead and give this one zero just win, babies. Tuck rule, tuck that. And some of you are like, but Mitch, the Raiders need a right tackle. Gadecki had 26 starts at right tackle for the Central Michigan Chippewas. Well, here's the thing, man. I don't view Gadecki as a right tackle. I don't. I watched the film. I saw the measurements. I think he's going to be a guard. So I'm not going to take a player who, to be honest, when I watch the tape, it reminds me of a lesser version of Alex Leatherwood. He's a good offensive lineman. And at the college level, he's going to beat people up because he's at the college level. He doesn't have the foot quickness, man. He's a physical guy, and he can block, and he's a better run blocker. But against fast players in the NFL, he's going to struggle just like what Alex Leatherwood did. So here's what Mel Kuyper had to say on the Raiders drafting Gadecki. The Raiders have just one pick in the first three rounds, and they have to find a right tackle to at least compete for the starting job. It's clear Alex Leatherwood, their first rounder in 2021, is better at guard. Gadecki started 26 games at right tackle in college. So my point is he's going to be a guard. You can draft somebody to be a right tackle, but if they don't have the traits to be a, a player or be a tackle in the NFL, it's not going to work. On top of that, when I go back and I look at a lot of the picks that Carmen Brasillo has made, the new offensive line coach here for the Raiders, they want long-armed offensive linemen. Gadecki has short arms considering the fact 
when you're looking at a tackle prospect. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and give this one zero just win, babies. Tuck will tuck that on going out and drafting him. Now, we do have one more rumor to get to, but before I get to it, hey, guys, remember, you can always hit me up on Instagram. I'm at MitchellRens365, doing my best to keep you guys up to date on the latest news, rumors, because I know a lot of stuff happens the entire offseason. So the last story, and... Yeah, we can just go to it. It's fine. The last story here, and major shout out to everyone who's tuning in live. It's around the Raiders, and it's around a trade idea that Bleacher Report ended up cooking up here. And if you guys don't have the graphic, it's okay. I'm not going to sweat it too much. And it's around the Raiders trading up, okay? And this is what Bleacher Report did. They try to come up with all these ideal trade ideas around each team. And before I go ahead and at least tell you about the trade, I do want to tell you that I really thought that the Raiders ended up winning this deal. And any time that we talk about trades, a lot of times people are like, well, wait a minute, Mitch, the Raiders are giving up a lot. And part of my job here as a Raiders Report host is to not only talk about trending topics, but I'm going to use the word educate because I think a lot of times people don't realize how much it's going to cost to be able to trade up into any move or be able to trade up into any draft. So the trade was the Raiders get the number 40 overall pick, okay? You get the number 40 overall pick from the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks get a third round pick, so the 86 overall pick, a second round pick next year, and then a fifth round pick next year. I put that in the trade value chart and shout out to Sam. We got the graphic, it was loading. This is what the trade was. And a lot of people are like, wow, that's a lot to give up. It's not enough still. Like, this is still not nearly enough to go up to get to number 40. I put it in the trade value chart, and not only is it, it's just not close. Like, if the Raiders were to do this and the Seahawks were to say yes, the Raiders would laugh in the Seahawks' face for being like, cool, appreciate it. I will say this, though, and I get it. It's a lot to be able to move up, and now this is a you-got-to-win-right-away type of mentality. The only way that I want the Raiders to realistically make a trade like this and to go this high up into the draft is if a certain player slides down. So my top five trade-up candidates, and I try to make these realistic, right? Like, I'm not going to say Evan Neal. He's not because he ain't falling down. Trevor Penning, he's the top right tackle. I don't see him getting out of the first round. I don't see any of these players getting out of the first round. But I can make arguments on why they wouldn't. Nicobe Dean, undersized linebacker. Jordan Davis, people are worried about his weight. Chris Olave, a lot of other talented receivers. And then Jamison Williams, the injury history. If any five of these players were to slide down to 40, then that trade I would absolutely go ahead and consider. All right, y'all, here's my question. We got 845 people watching. Major shout-out to Patrick B. in that big old super chat. And uh, well, you're going to love what we got in store for you, man. We, we, you're going to love what, you, what we got in store for you today, Patrick B. I know, I know you're always an interactive guy and the fan-led mock you're going to like. Here's my question, though, before we get into the very first mailbag. And, Sam, I want you to use that uh, super chat from Patrick B., and that's going to lead off the mailbag. Cool. So type T for trade up, or if you think the Raiders should just stay put at 86, let me know. Do you want them to trade up, type T, or do you want them to stay put at 86? Let me know what y'all are thinking. Terrence Miner says David Ajabo. I really like Ajabo. However, I don't think he's even going to slide to 86, and I don't know if I want to trade away multiple picks to go take a player where... What if he's not the same guy after the Achilles? Because Achilles can zap a lot of quickness, man. I get these guys are phenomenal athletes, but Achilles injury, it's a little bit different than others. So for that reason, I wouldn't trade up for a Jabo. But uh, let, get some votes in here. We got Vincenzo. We got um, uh, Amar is going to go with uh, S for stay. Also, shout out to, we got uh, Ibera. Appreciate you. We got Jax over on Rumble as well. So, so far, it's Jax and Ibra. They're the main guys over in the Rumble rants. If you guys want to shout out here on the show anything you see here, if you go over to Rumble, your chances of getting shout out go up by probably about 500% because the audience isn't quite as big over there. The link is down below, rumble.com slash Raiders Report. So, will the Raiders trade up? Type T for trade, type S for stay. Keep on Let me know. Shout out to Jackson Ibra. I see you guys over there on Rumble. So now what we're going to do, y'all, is get into a mailbag. And I'm going to answer y'all's questions for the next, we'll say, 15 minutes or so. So you can use hashtag Raiders or you can skip the line 
and then that way you get your question featured on the show first. So if you got a question, all you got to do, hashtag Raiders, or you can go ahead and skip the line. It's going to be the easiest way. So in terms of Dave Wilson, Patrick B, LC Raider, and then uh, Amar, oh, gosh, I can never get I can't look at your YouTube name because then I can't pronounce it right. Ibera, appreciate you. We will get to all y'all supers. And Javier, I see you, I see you, I see you. We will get to your questions coming up right now here on this Raiders Mailbag. Raider Nation, what's going on? Before we get into today's mailbag that was filmed on Tuesday, friendly reminder to go ahead and subscribe to Chat Sports at the link that you see below, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. We're going to be live all three days, all seven rounds. It's going to be the number one most watched draft coverage on YouTube, and we're going to get the picks before you see them on television. So there's the link. It's going to be in the comments and description. Go subscribe to Chat Sports. Let's go to the first Super Chat, and it's a big one. Patrick B. Hooray! Raiders! I know I'm excited to see what Tyree Gillespie can do as a safety. How do you feel about him? Well, if you guys haven't seen a funny video, couldn't pronounce his name last year. But this year, I can. Uh, I do like Tyree Gillespie a lot. I was uh, thought he was a good overall safety when he first came out of Missouri. He had a lot of injury issues last season. One of the things that I love, though, about him was his versatility and his ability to not only tackle, but he went up against some very legit wide receivers last season at Missouri. So, or two years ago when he was with the Tigers. He's a good player. It's just going to be figuring out where he fits because he's probably behind Roderick Teamer. He's behind Deron Harmon. He's behind Jonathan Abram. How much playing time is there for the fourth rounder? Well, let's go to Dave Wilson. What do you think about JoJo? Okay, you're actually going to see him in a, in a show today the linebacker from Nebraska, or Nick Cross, safety from Maryland. So I actually did a mock draft, I'm going to say three weeks ago, and I took Nick Cross. I think that this guy could go in the second round. He's a very athletic, very built safety. I ended up getting him in the fourth though in my mock. And then JoJo, he's another good linebacker prospect. I would say he's more in this like fourth round area. However, it's really going to depend on there's there's like a there's like a grouping of third round linebackers. If they go a lot earlier, somebody like JoJo could go earlier, but he could end up sliding down the board a little bit. If you were to ask me which guy I think is a better prospect, I would say Nick Cross, though I would rather take JoJo because it's a bigger need for this team. Let's go to Perry. What up, man? So we got Abe Lucas, Daniel, I believe you mean Filele, and then Kobe B. I'm gonna go with Kobe Bryant. If, if all three of those players were on the board, I would rank them Abraham Lucas, then I would go Daniel Falele, and then I'd go Kobe. I mean, if all three of those guys were available, I would be jumping for joy because I don't see all three of those guys being there. Abraham Lucas, though, is more than likely going to be taken in the top 60 picks, but that's the route I'm going to go. What about y'all, though? Who do you want the Raiders to draft at number 86 overall? I actually made a video about this on the Raiders Report YouTube channel. I ranked them. My top 10 players that I would realistically take at 86. If you're curious on some names that I'm thinking, go ahead. Check out the video. It's also available. But in the meantime, let me know down in the comments right now. Who do you want the Raiders to draft at 86 overall? What up, LC? How many believe it, babies? Alex Leatherwood starts at right tackle. I'm going to go ahead and say half of a baby, which is a, a leg of a baby. I just don't see it happening. I don't see Leatherwood having the athletic ability to play right tackle in the National Football League. And when they made the pick, that was one of the very first things I said. And I know that some of y'all got mad at me for it, but it's one of those scenarios where I don't like to say I told you so. It's just Leatherwood is a guard. That's what he is. He's a guard. He has a better chance of playing left guard than he does right tackle. Let's go to... What happens next? I was thinking like Tyrannosaurus Rex is like what came to my mind here, but I don't know. Fanside, it said that the Raiders should sign Eric Fisher since we need a right tackle. Well, Fanside, it's bad at their job. Fanside doesn't know what they're talking about. Eric Fisher's a left tackle. And he played left tackle last season for the Colts, and just because somebody is a tackle, it doesn't mean that they can just go over to the right side. If the Raiders want a right tackle, his name's Daryl Williams, and hopefully by the time you guys see this video on a later date, he's still available. But yes, Eric Fisher, no, go fish. Daryl Williams, yes. If you guys want even more Raiders coverage for free, yes, I said free, hit the subscribe button. 
Turn on those notifications. That way you never miss a video. We're pumping out news, rumors, fan-led mock drafts, regular mock drafts, mock drafts with trades. And we're just dishing out trades left and right. Mock drafts. I mean, if you want Raiders content, we are your one-stop shop. We got everything here. Unless you're looking for a mystery box. Then I don't got a mystery box. But what I do have is a brand new Raiders video out every single day. That I can guarantee you. Let's go to Dave Wilson. Will Graham use Abram like Jabril Peppers? Good question. Yes and no is going to be the answer. Jabril Peppers is a better safety than what Abram is. Abram is probably a better, I'll say, run stopper, better pass rusher. But Jabril is a better overall safety, definitely better in coverage. But I do think that they're going to be similarly used. Abram's going to be in the box. He's going to be up near the line of scrimmage. That's how he's going to be used the most. But when I go back and I look at Abrams' like snap usage, right? He's one of the highest snap players every single game for the Raiders. I think that number is going to get cut in half. I think Deron Harmon's going to be the guy that they use a lot, lot more. Dave, though, appreciate the question. What up, man? Mitch, do you know or think you know which player Hondo Carpenter has been referring to that is considering the Raiders? I think it's Tyron Matthew. Hashtag just win, baby. No, I don't really uh, follow Hondo all too closely. I mean... A lot of these guys, you know, they, they do exactly what we do. They, they do their best to report on what's available out there, though Hondo did do a very good job covering the whole Josh McDaniel story. But, no, I, I do not have an inside scoop on what Hondo Carpenter's doing. Sorry. Well, let's go to Javier. Would you trade Jacobs for a second? Yeah, in a heartbeat. But no NFL team in their right mind is going to give you a second-round pick for Jacobs. I would say, you know, when I think about other teams out there, like the Panthers want a first-round pick for Chris McCaffrey. That's not going to happen. The Giants, they want a first-round pick for Saquon Barkley. That's not going to happen. So, from NFL analysts and people that I talk to, second-round pick for McCaffrey, I, I don't even think a team would give up a second-round pick at this point for Barkley. I would say if the Raiders could get a third-round pick for Jacobs, I would still probably be even surprised about that. Josh is a good running back, but running backs don't have the value in today's NFL because they're easily replaceable, especially when you look at the injuries that Josh has had. He's unbelievable. But no, no, no NFL team is going to give a second-round pick for Josh. Let's go to just Oakland bias. Should the Raiders bring back Donald Penn? He said he wants to play again. Yeah, I, I mean, I want to play football too. Donald Penn, guys, is what, 36, 37 years old? And he's probably going to fall into that category of was one time a really good player. I know you all fall in love with these old Raiders guys all the time, but we got to face it. We, we tried to rely on Richie Incognito last year. Father time is undefeated. Donald wants to play. He says he's in shape. Big difference between being in football shape and then being in shape in general. Like, I'm in halfway decent shape. I am nowhere even close to being in football shape. So, Donald Penn, it's a big old fat no for me, dog. But you know what? We're going to ask you anyway. Why for yes and for no, should Vegas bring back Donald Penn? And if you're like, Donald Penn is better than Brandon Parker right now, then maybe you type your why for yes. Y'all know how I feel about Brandon Parker. I would rather have Brandon Parker at right tackle than Donald Penn right now. It's just me being real. Let's go to Cameron. Who is the best right tackle in the draft, and would you trade up to get him? The best right tackle in the draft is Trevor Penning from Northern Iowa, and I've talked about him numerous times. It's just, what are you going to have to give up to get him? And I put out a video a few days ago, Cameron, about some trade ideas to try to get up into the first round or try to get up into the second round. My trade idea to get up into round one was trading Jonathan Abram, John Simpson. I believe it was a first round pick in 2023. And then it was like three more picks on top of that. And all those trades that I did, I put through the trade value chart to make sure that they were 100% fair, to make sure that they weren't just one-sided. So appreciate the question, but he's going to have to fall down to 40, 41, 42 to even think about trading up for him. Let's go to Casey the Sledge. Hey, Mitch, where are all the remaining holes? Um, I was looking around for some holes. Personally, I don't know, man. I, I mean, we can go ask Shia LaBeouf. I know he's been digging holes for a long time. The biggest holes on the Raiders team, I would still say, is right tackle. Finding a, another receiver outside. Like, I don't want to just sit here and say I'm confident in Brian Edwards and Demarcus Robinson, though. I'll settle for it. Another hole that the Raiders have is finding an extra backup tight end because the Raiders need an extra tight end. Another defensive back, linebacker, is probably the biggest need. And then I might even go ahead and say defensive tackle because you have some depth there. Defensive tackle, 
linebacker. Those are probably the still two biggest holes right now. Now, guys, I get it. We get a lot, a lot of questions here on our show. So whether you're watching this live on YouTube or whether you're watching this on Rumble, I get it. I can't get to all y'all's questions. It's just the truth. So what I want you to do is DM me your questions on Locals. And if you do, I will respond. Like, it's going to be the easiest way for me to be able to go ahead and do that. Some people who I know are members over on Locals. Shout out to Tom, Raider Rob 78, Giovanni, Super Raider 831. I also told them to put in their area codes. So shout out to Def Jasper, Adam Jones, and then Nathan. Y'all are real ones. If you want to see your name, shout it out here on the Raiders Report. Go ahead, become a member. It's 100% free. How? At RaidersReport.Locals.com. That's the link. It's also in the comments. It's also in the description of today's video. Let's go to Cody. Do you think Mullen and Rocky Sin will begin the season as starters? If the Raiders don't make any other adjustments this year in terms of going out and signing another corner, I'll say yes. Though, I would not be surprised if Averett, who's the, the corner that the Raiders went ahead and they signed from the Baltimore Ravens. I like him a lot, and I, know the, and I also know that the Raiders coaches are high on him. I'll say yes that Mullen and Rocky Sin will start. However, it wouldn't surprise me if only Rocky Sim was the remaining quarterback, cornerback starter at the end of the season. What up, Alexander? Mitch, Mitch, even five just win babies are less babies. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Let's go to James. Um, could you see the Raiders drafting Philele? If he's available, he's six foot eight. he's like 360 pounds. And one of the things that Carmen Brasillo has always done a good job of is he – finds these players that we'll say have high upside, have these giant bodies, and is able to mold them into good right tackles. Like Trent Brown was a monster of a man. Whether you like to admit it or not, he was. He was a seventh round pick. Brasillo did a great job working with him, and he turned out to be a really good offensive lineman when Carmen Brasillo was working with him. So if I was Daniel Falele, if I was his agent, I would love the opportunity to come to the Raiders. I would love the opportunity to be able to work with Carmen Brasillo. So if he's available, sure, absolutely it's a possibility. Let's go to Jesse Ballard. What are your thoughts on Sky Moore? Okay, I think you mean Smoke Monday, the safety from Auburn. Really cool name, and I wish he was a better football player because of the name. So we have a rule here at Chat Sports, or at least Tom Downey does, where if a guy's got a really cool name, it's probably going to be really good at football. Smoke Monday is uh, he's a physical player. I just don't see him materializing in the National Football League. Like, he can't cover. So, Smoke, sorry. I'm going to puff, puff, pass, though. Let's go to Sean. What up, brother? Bring Penn back as an assistant offensive line coach. I mean, maybe. I, I don't know if that's what he wants to do. I don't know if that's the best route that I would go. I mean, the Raiders coaching staff, I'm going to put a lot of faith into them because they've done a lot of good things this offseason. They've put their team in the right situation. So, if Donald Penn wants to come back that bad, maybe. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to trust the Raiders coaching staff because they've proven to me this offseason that they got their shit together. All right, y'all, who do you want the Raiders to go ahead and draft at 86 overall? Coming up here on today's show, we're going to get into our fan-led mock draft. So if you're at home, get out your phone, get out your keyboard. I am going to require a lot of typing. So whether you got a stretch whether you got to spit on your fingers a little bit to make sure that they work better. Hey, man, whatever you got to do, let me know who you want the Raiders to draft at 86. And if you guys want to make sure that you can secure the pick, we got some rolls coming up here. So this is going to be a little bit longer of a live show for the simple fact of it's going to be a lot of typing. It's going to be a lot of voting, and we're putting a lot of power in y'all's hands. So before we get into this fan-led mock, we're going to go through some super chats and then, yeah, we're going to go through some super chats and then we'll get to the mock here. So let's go to Javier. Did you see the wide receiver that supposedly ran a 303? I think it was Barnes. Um, I don't know what you mean by a 303. I know for a fact that nobody has ever ran anything under a four for a 40 yard dash. Like, a three, like this is literally the fastest man that has ever existed. I don't even know if Jesus Christ himself on Easter or Christmas could run a could run this fast of a 40 time. What? What's I think he's thinking of Kalen Barnes, maybe the quarterback from Baylor that ran a 423. 
Yeah, I know. That was but, an official. But Kalen Barnes isn't a wide receiver, so he's a corner. Yeah, yeah the cornerback. Javier, man, I, I don't know where we're going with this super chat. I appreciate it. I'm trying to give you my best advice possible. I just, I don't know what a 303 three is. So let's go to El Raider. Thoughts on bringing Bradbury if the Giants cut him? Yes. If the Giants cut James Bradbury, I'm all over it. Though I still am in the camp that one NFL team sooner rather than later will give up at least a six-round pick for him. Yes, you also have to go out and pay him 13.4 or 13.7, whatever it might be. But he was a great corner in Patrick Graham's system. He'd be a great fit in Vegas. And as far as I'm concerned, I want the Raiders squad to get another corner. I don't really trust Trayvon Mullen. So, yes, I would love for the Raiders to go ahead and do this. So what you guys are going to see now is we're about to get into our fan-led mock draft. What? You laughing at me? Shout out to uh, Gilbert's friend, Mike. <laughs> Happy birthday to Mike. I don't, I don't know. How do you pronounce that last name? Oxmail? What's the full name? I can't read it. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's Mitch funny. Mitch got got. See, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to totally read it. And now, I now got I, it. That's why I wanted it? to give the shout What out. would it be though? Mike Oxmail. I don't, Oxmall. I. Small. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> See, Clever Mitch. See, I can't read that. All I see is mail. Funny, 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 funny. All right, guys. So I see a few more Super Chats that did come in here. So we're going to go ahead and get to those, and then we will get into the fan-led mock draft. So we'll hit these two Supers, and then we'll get into the fan-led. Thoughts on – oh, sorry. The greatness of the Raiders. Nick Benito, the linebacker from Oklahoma. Good linebacking prospect. Probably going to be somewhere in that three, fourth round range, but – there's other linebackers that I would rather take over Benito, which, like Quay Walker, I, I love Quay Walker, though I don't think he's going to be available in round three. What about Cameron? Mitch, we still need speed at wide receiver. Who is a speed guy we could get in the later rounds? A speedy wide receiver in the late rounds. Man, it's a good question. I'm trying to think of all the top guys that I have. See, here's the issue. I, the wide receivers that I've been looking at for the Raiders ha haven't really been speed guys in the late rounds because the, a lot of the players that the Raiders have been looking at in terms of draft prospects, not that they're not fast, but like Danny Gray, the receiver from SMU, he's a long strider. He does have some speed, but then I know they brought in the wide receiver from Texas Tech. His last name is just an absolute nightmare. What is it? It's Eric Ezekuma. I would say Eric Ezekuma. He's more of a physical, bigger receiver. If the Raiders are going to go out and get a speedster, I see it happening in free agency. But uh, I actually don't know if the Raiders even get a speedster at wide receiver. If you want a twitchy guy, this might be crazy to some of y'all. Marcus Jones, the cornerback, special teams returner. Turn him into a wide receiver. Turn him into an offensive weapon. That's what I would do. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Board. Coming up here on today's show, we're going to get into a fan-led mock draft. So I had a lot of people say, hey, Mitch, love the fact that you included other Raiders content creators in your mock. What about us? So what you're going to see here on today's show during our live is you are going to make the picks. So if you're watching the Raiders Board right now, you're sitting at home, get out your keyboard, make sure that you're able to type because you're going to need to be able to do it on today's show. So you are literally going to pick all five of these Raiders picks here. And what I did is I did a PFN mock draft simulator. So, Sam, let's go through the mock because we got a little ways to go. So what you guys are going to be able to do here is vote on who the Raiders are going to take in the third round, in the fourth round, in the fifth round, in the seventh round. And then if you want to go ahead and get extra votes in for certain people, you're going to be able to go ahead and do that. So what you guys are seeing right now on screen is we are going through the entire mock draft leading up to pick number 86. That way you guys can see every single player that has been taken. That way you can know that, well, certain guys aren't available because you will have an opportunity, if you want to, to make the pick right away via a super chat. So make sure you guys are looking right now up on screen, soaking it in, seeing every single player that is taken in round two. And then once we get closer to round three, we will show y'all who are some of the best players available and how you can go ahead and get your votes in. 
So Boye Mafe at 64 overall. And now the next screen coming up here is going to be round three. So this would be the time where I'm getting excited and I'd be getting eager. Also, I am going to be live for the 2022 NFL Draft here on the Raiders Report. So if you guys haven't already, subscribe. Turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss it. So then, which means coming up here, the Raiders are about to be on the clock. So Carson Strong, gone. Martin Emerson, Romeo Dubs, Vernon McKinley, Calvin Austin the third. So that means the Raiders in round three, pick 86. Well, guys, we are on the clock. So who should the Raiders go ahead and draft at pick number 86? And I know a lot, a lot of names there. A lot of names to try to consider and figure out. So this is what I did. With every single round that goes by, I try to go ahead and tell you, here are the top nine players that are available. And if you want to go ahead and make the pick, you can go ahead and super chat. So if you want the Raiders to go out and draft Leal Chennault, the linebacker from Wisconsin, type 1. Cameron Thomas, type 2. Nicholas petit Friere, the offensive tackle from Ohio State, type 3. Drake Jackson, 4. Greg Dolich, 5. Kirby Joseph, 6. Brian Osamoa, shout out to Honcho, 7. Channing Tindall, 8. Zion McCollum, type 9. Or you can go ahead and super chat and make your own pick. So every single time somebody types in a number, so Reed Chamberlain, type 3, for his pick, that counts as one vote. One comment equals one vote. You send in a $5 super chat with the player that you want, that counts as 50 votes. You send in a $10 super chat, that counts as 125 votes. $20 super chat, 250 votes for that player. If you just want to make the pick, just like, you know what, man, this is the guy that I want, and you want to have a lot of control over this mock draft, you send in a $100 super chat, Pick's yours. I don't care what the pick is. I don't. It could be. A, it, it could literally be anything, and I don't care. So here are the rules. So one more time, let's go back to the best players available and get your votes in right now. Who do you want the Raiders to go ahead and take? We're going to start the clock right now. We're going to give you 90 seconds to get your votes in, and the only other rule is this. If you do go ahead and you send in a super chat and the player's gone, Obviously, I can't make that happen. So LC Raider, I see he just went ahead and sent in a super chat for number one, Leal Chennault, the linebacker from Wisconsin. So right now, if we were to stop the clock, the pick for the Raiders would be linebacker Leal Chennault from Wisconsin. He right now leads. And also, we got the team in the background. They're taking all the numbers that come in. The pick will be decided by you. Daniel Topchi, he gets his votes in now for number three, Nicholas petit Friere. So right now, Nicholas petit Friere is in the lead in terms of the votes. And I'm seeing right now that the guys are telling me in my ear, Leo Chanel is about 75 votes behind Nicholas petit Friere now. So just keep that in mind. So he took Nicholas petit Friere. Keep those votes coming in. We got 30 seconds to go. If there's a player on screen that you want the Raiders to go out and get. Start typing right now if you want to go ahead and put a super chat in. That way you get your vote settled. That might be the easiest way to do it. So LC Raider, he put one in for Leo Chanel. Daniel said, you know what, man, the Raiders need an offensive tackle. Nicholas petit Friere from Ohio State. Get those votes in. Nicholas petit Friere is in the lead. Hang on, we're going to go five, four, Three, two, one. The time is up. We're going to let the fax machine get it going. We're going to let the fax machine keep on rolling here. We're going to wait until everything comes in from the data scrapers, but it does look like Nicholas petit Friere is going to be the winner. So we're going to let all those votes come in. We're still tallying them up here a little bit. It's okay. We're okay. So continue to get those votes in. Our computer system is a little bit slow right now. <laughs> so in the meantime, we're still trying to count some of these votes. Here we go. We got it. I think we got it, right? Yeah, we got it. So at pick number 86 in our fan-led mock draft, the Las Vegas Raiders went ahead and they took offensive tackle Nicholas petit Friere 
from the Ohio State Buckeyes. Obviously, one of the biggest needs right now for the Raiders is OT. However, I actually, when I look at Petit Free Air, I don't know if he's 100% ready to start right away at right tackle. So, this is going to be somebody who's going to come in, compete with Brandon Parker. You probably still have Parker as your starting right tackle and let Petit Free Air learn with Carmen Brasillo. He's six foot five, weight 316 pounds, started 12 games last season for the Buckeyes, did take a little bit of a step back. In terms of some of his combine slash pro day metrics, they're not fantastic, but they're also not terrible either. When he was coming out of high school, very good athlete from top to bottom. Ran a 40-yard dash, 5.14. It's faster than me. 24, one and a half inch vert. I think my vert was better. Broad jump, definitely beat me. And my bench, I did about 12. He did 24. Definitely beat me there. So this is a high upside pick. But for an offensive line coach like Carmen Brasillo, I'm okay going this route here. Though there might have been some other offensive linemen that we could have got later on that you know I might have been a little bit okay with. So that means now coming up is going to be the Raiders' fourth round pick, 126 overall. And we're going to do the exact same thing like we did before. Before I show you the top players available and before I tell you which players went off the board, remember y'all, we go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Not only do we give you guys free videos, not only do we go live, we try to be interactive like you're seeing right now. So I know it's easy to do a mock draft, but this mock is going to be put out on the Raider Sport YouTube channel tomorrow on Wednesday with all the picks that you guys make, and this show is built on the backs of the nation. It's about giving you guys a voice, so just like what I did with my uh, content creator mock draft yesterday, I let the other guys pick. I'm going to let you guys pick, then I'll give you guys my grades, and then I'll give you my overall analysis on this mock. But if you haven't already subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Hit that notification bell as well. That way you never miss a thing. And if we can go to a sub-only chat... If I'm pushing it, just tell me. It's all good. If we go to sub only, that's fine. If we got to wait until the fifth round, that's also fine with me as well. So let's go through now all the picks here after the Raiders went ahead and they took Nicholas Petit Friere. Kirby Joseph, he went off the board. The Cowboys ended up going with Justin Ross. Then keep on cycling through these. Cameron Thomas was hoping that he would fall a little bit. Drake Jackson, he's gone. Brian Osamoa, gone. Jalen Amore Davis, Cameron Jurgens, he ends up going. Wow, Jurgens, imagine a last name like that. Leo Chanel, I know a lot of y'all wanted him. He ended up going number 97 overall to the Lions. And then Kate Otten as well, guys. We are literally doing this mock draft live. So shout out to Sam for updating everything on the fly here. Jerome Ford, Channing Tittle, Isaiah Thomas gone. The next eight picks then. Raiders again, they're at 126. So we're just trying to show y'all every single pick by each team, who's going where. Also, some breaking news that happened that had nothing to do with this is Jarvis Landry. He's heading on over to the New Orleans Saints, so pretty crazy signing there. Um, David Bell off the board, James Cook up to pick number 120 now. Darian Beavers, Cade Mays, Brian Robinson Jr., the running back from Alabama going to Denver. Damon Clark, Michael Wright, Mario Goodrich off the board, Yusuf Corker, which means now the Raiders are getting closer to their round four pick at number 126 as it stands right now. So Lucas Kroll gone, Alante Taylor gone, Braxton Jones gone, Zonovan Knight gone. So the Raiders are on the clock, and these are the players that I believe are the best available at pick number 126. Zion McCollum, the cornerback from Sam Houston State. If you want him, type 10. <clears throat> what about the edge rusher from Virginia Tech who ran a 4.3640 Amari Barno, type 11. Khalil Shakir, the wide receiver from Boise, type 12. JT Woods, we took him yesterday in our mock. Safe from Baylor, type 13. Marquise Hayes, the offensive guard from Oklahoma, type 14. Luke Fortner, good center out of Kentucky, 15. John Ridgeway, the defensive tackle from Arkansas, 16. Marcus Jones, type 17. Kellen Deesh, the offensive tackle from Arizona State, go ahead and type 18. Also, remember, the Super Chat rolls also apply here. So get those votes in. 
Let me know who you guys want. Five dollars equals fifty. Ten dollars equals one twenty-five. Twenty equals two fifty. If you just want to outright make a pick, they do not have to be the players that you see up on screen. However, they do have to be available. Send in a hundred dollar super chat. So let's go to back to the best players available right now and get those votes in. I'm seeing right now that right the the leader in my ear is number. 17. So Marcus Jones has got a slight advantage right now over JT Woods, who also has a slight advantage over Khalil Shakir. Right now, those are the guys leading it. So if we were to end it right now, all right, here comes some more votes. Marcus Jones, 17 from Daniel. Right now, Marcus Jones would be the pick. Also now, Cameron Sproul, he just sent in a $5. So Daniel, this, this might just be the Daniel Top G mock draft. And then Cameron Sproul sent in a number 17. So Marcus Jones right now has a clear-cut lead, and I would say unless we get another super chat, the pick is going to end up being the cornerback out of Houston, Marcus Jones. Big-time lead here. Keep on getting those votes in. We're going to continue to tally them up. But Jones, as it stands right now, has about a 150-vote lead over the next closest person. So if you want to go ahead and jump it, $20 Super Chat, or you can just outright make the pick with a $100 Super Chat, and the pick is yours. So, we got five, four, three, two, one. Get the final votes in. Get them in right now. Continue to get those votes in. Who do you want the Raiders to go out and get? The number 12s are starting to flow in here pretty good. 12s are definitely flowing in here. Final picks, get them in for our fan-led mock draft. And we got it. Here we go in round four, pick number 126 in our fan-led mock draft. Raider Nation has gone ahead and they've select cornerback from Houston, Marcus Jones. I don't know if Jones is ever going to be able to make it as a corner in the National Football League. But he might be one of my favorite prospects and one of the best athletes I've seen. He's five foot eight, 174 pounds, nine career special teams touchdowns. This dude is twitchy. He is electric with the ball in his hands. And if I was an NFL team, I would make him our punt returner. I'd make him the kick returner. Hell, I would even put him on offense because I would want to see him out on the offensive side of the football, have him be a little bit of a weapon. And if you can actually get him to be a halfway decent cornerback prospect. Dude, I'm telling you, this is going to be a high-risk, high-reward type of pick. 47 tackles last season with Houston. 13 PBUs, 5 interceptions. Those numbers are good at Houston. However, his technique is not quite good enough, I would say, to make it at the National Football League level. But when you have an athlete like this, you got to go ahead and try to take advantage of it. So we're going to go Marcus Jones here. The cornerback from Houston, he's the pick, which means as it stands right now in our fan-led mock draft, we got Nicholas petit Air, the offensive tackle from Ohio State. In round three, 86 at pick number 126 is Marcus Jones, the cornerback from Houston. If you guys are having a good time right now, and I appreciate everyone watching, if you could go ahead and like the video, which means coming up right now, it's round five, pick 164, and a friendly reminder, we got back-to-back -back picks here, okay? Back-to-back -back picks, 164 and 165. If you want even more content, like I already did a fan-led mock draft over on Locals. If you're like, man, you know what? This is kind of cool. Well, guess what? We do a lot more content just like this over on Locals. So if you want even more exclusive content, become a member. It's 100% free to become a member on Locals. All you got to do is go to the link that you see below, RaidersReport.Locals.com. And if you are a member, you got a chance to be getting a shout-out. I'm going to be giving a lot of shout-outs throughout the entire week to all the members over there. So shout-out to Tom, Raider Rob, Giovanni, Super Raider 831. I put out a community post on locals hey if you guys want to shout out just comment your area code so shout out to Def Jasper shout out to Adam Jones shout out to Nathan 7353 y'all are real ones if you want even more exclusive content on top of that well then yes then you be then you can become a supporter which is $10 for the month or 
hundred dollars a year, you get two free months, and it's like two extra videos each week, an extra live show, all that good stuff. So I see some people right now in the live chat shouting out their area code. If you guys want to go to shout out your area code, I'll give some shout outs here real quick. Julio Torres nine zero three, Jeff Rogers seven seven three, Bourbon Country Raider six zero six, Lori Lamp eight. 1-4, Jeff Rogers, 7-7-3, Alacron Gaming, 4-0-8, Boomer Raider, 6-6-1, Brett Hoffman, 9-0-9, Tony D, pick an offensive lineman or defensive line. You guys can pick it. Send in supers. Uh, we got Corey, Tony D, Phillip, Untouchable Raider. Daniel, keep on shouting out your area code. And then once I get the thumbs up, then we're going to get this thing going into round five. So let's continue to show you all who are the next players off the board. Zion McCollum, gone. Marcus Hayes, gone. We're going to keep on rocking and rolling through the fourth round until we get to round five. Wow, Bailey Zabe, another quarterback going to 49ers. Zappy, however you pronounce it. Chris Paul, not the point guard, but the offensive lineman from Tulsa. Interesting pick there at number 143. John Ridgeway, he's gone. Now we are into round five. Darryl Rosenthal, that's that offensive tackle that I've talked about a few times here on the show. Smoke Monday. Smoke if you got him. JT Woods off the board of Seattle at 153. Tyquan Thornton, the receiver from Baylor. A lot, a lot of speed there, round five. Then at pick number 161, Matt Hennessy, Zamir White, Alex Wright, which then means the Las Vegas Raiders are on the clock here with back-to-back -back picks at 164 and at 165. So... Let's get the votes going. Here are the best players available, I believe, at 164 for the silver and black. If you want to go out and get the edge rusher from Virginia Tech, go ahead and type 19. If you think it should be Kellen Deesh, type 20. JoJo Doman, type 21. Josh Paschal, the edge rusher from Kentucky. I like him a lot, but some off-the-field concerns, 22. Luke Gadecki, the offensive tackle from the Central Michigan Chippewas, type 23. Pierre Strong, running back from San, uh, South Dakota State, 24. D'Angelo Malone, good offensive or good outside linebacker from Western Kentucky. Dijon Dixon, the wide receiver from Nichols State. Not a lot of people know about him, but he's a good talent. And then Danny Gray, the receiver from SMU, type 27. So get your votes in. Who are you going with? And as a reminder, you every single pick, you can go ahead and throw in a super chat. That way you can lock it in to make sure that you get the guy you want. So let's go ahead and show the best players available again and get those votes in. Who do you guys want? Tony D. He wants Kellen Dyche. We got Ryu. Also wants Dyche. Lori Lamp. Seeing a lot of 27s. I would say right now that Danny Gray, the wide receiver from SMU, would be the pick here for the Raiders. So if you're over on Rumble, also, don't be afraid to get your votes in as well, like Tropical Remy, Raider for Life. We got, uh, who else? 19 from Raider for Life, type in 19 over there. Get those votes in, y'all. Who do you want? Right now, Danny Gray has got the lead. In second place is D'Angelo Malone, the outside linebacker from Western Kentucky. It's a two-way. Two-way. Then I would say it's probably... Luke Gadecki, the offensive tackle from Central Michigan. So we're going to go and get, what, 60 more seconds? Okay. 60 more seconds. Get those votes in. Oh, Daniel, he's going to go Kellen D. here. Right now, Kellen's got the lead. And then Cruiser. Cruiser's going to go with Amari Borno. So as it stands right now, the pick would be for Kellen Dyche, the offensive tackle from Arizona State. It's interesting because, remember, we already took an offensive tackle at 86. Then, Cruiser Tim said Amari Barno. So, right now, the team is telling me it goes Kellen Dyche, then Danny Gray, then Amari uh, Barno. So, those are the top three players right now. We got 20 seconds left. Get your votes in. Who do you want the Raiders to go ahead and take? Danny Gray, if we type enough 27s, we might be able to catch it because Danny had a lot of votes. If you guys really want Danny Gray, start spamming 27 right now. Right now, it's still Kellen Deesh. He would be the guy who the Raiders would end up taking right now. We got 10 seconds remaining. I think unless we get a 
$10 super chat. It's going to end up being Kellen Deesh, the offensive tackle from Arizona State. All right, we got five, four, three, two, one. Continue to get those votes, and it's really, really close right now. I see everyone in the chat wants Danny Gray. However, the super chat reigns supreme here. It's going to end up being Kellen Deesh. He just just beat out Danny Gray by about, I'm counting right now, the team just told me that he beat him out by about 31 votes. So it was close, really close here. So he's 25 years old, he's six foot seven. And he's got 303 pounds. Good offensive line prospect. And honestly, I kind of like the idea of going with both Dyche and Nicholas Petit Friere. You're going to let both of those guys battle it out for a tackle position. Still don't know if either of them are ready to step in right away over uh, Brandon Parker. But you have extra depth here at offensive tackle. So Brandon Parker might be the starter this year. You let him go. You let Dyche. You let Petit Friere battle it out. And then in the next season... Hopefully one of those guys can go ahead and they can win the starting job. In terms of the overall combine numbers, 4.89 40-yard dash is extremely impressive. And I actually like to pick more of the, uh, Kellen than I do Petit Air personally. I just think he's an overall has a higher upside in terms of a prospect. Good arms, longer body, just fits more what Carmen Brasilla would end up would want as a prospect overall. But round four, or round five, excuse me, pick 164, it goes Kellen Dyche, which means Petit Friere was the first pick that we had here at round three. Then it was Marcus Jones. Then it was Kellen Dyche, which now means the Raiders are still on the clock here. I know, there's a lot going on. Still on the clock. So if you guys want Danny Gray, Julio Jorah says, Mitch, one shout out, please. We got you, Julio, don't worry. PG. I see you as well. Don't worry. You guys can still get Danny Gray because guess what? He's going to still be available here. So here are going to be the best players available at 165. Best players available coming up here at 165. So not a lot has changed. So again, if you guys want to go ahead and get Danny Gray, let's get the votes going one more time here. If you want Amari Barno, Get that 19 going again. So, Cruz, if that's who you want, get those supers going. I'm going to guess, though, it's going to end up being Danny Gray unless we get some super chats rolling. If you want JoJo, type 21. 22 for Josh Paschal. Luke Gadecki, 23. Pierre Strong, 24. D'Angelo, 25. Danny Gray, though, 27. And no surprise, it is a clear landslide right now. For Danny Gray, he's got a big lead. It's going to take a super chat to knock off Danny Gray. We got 618 people watching. If you haven't liked the video yet, please, please, please go ahead and do so. And while we're still tallying up these votes here, if you guys are fired up for next season, go ahead and like the video right now. And there's something that some people are going to like. Amari Barno, I'm tallying the votes right now. Barno now has a... 75 vote lead over Danny Gray. That's 250 votes right there for Amari Barno. Major, major shout out. Wow, that's a big one, man. <clears throat> Ibarra. Ibarra. He's really getting it going. He sent it in. Ibarra sending in the 19. Amari Barno's got a big lead. Oh, and Cruiser Tim. Um, oh, man, Barno now, he's got about a 100-vote lead. A 100-vote lead is about the number here after Cruiser Tim and after Ibarra said, you know what, hold my beer here. We want Amari Barno, the edge rusher from Virginia Tech. Now, if you guys want to try to just keep on typing those 27s, good luck. It's going to probably take a super chat to do it. We got 15 seconds to go. And Amari Barno's got about a 60-vote lead over Danny Gray. Cruiser Tim wanted them. Ibarra wanted them. We got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Right now in the lead is Barno. 5, 
four, three, <clears throat> two, one. The voting is done. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Daniel. It's a last second ditch effort. So that's what we're going to do. This is what we're going to end up doing here. We're going to put another 30 seconds back on the clock because Daniel too, Top G said, hold my beer here. Daniel Top G said, I want Danny Gray. So we're going to put 30 seconds back on the clock. And Danny Gray right now has a 250 vote lead over Amari Barno. It is a two-man race unless somebody sends in a $100 super chat and just outright makes the pick. Danny Gray has the clear lead. So to Cruiser, to Ibera, if you want Amari Barno, you're going to have to send in a super chat because the votes coming in right now are clearly for Danny Gray and Top G. He's so far the MVP of today's show. He wants Danny Gray, and it's going to take a super chat to go ahead and get Amari Barno. It's going to honestly, man, it's going to take a big one. Uh, Ryu says, 19 stop playing. Gray wouldn't even make the practice squad. Ryu, appreciate the super chat. We got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Oh, and Big Silver and Black says, hold this. And yes, we're going to make the pick now, and it is official. It's going to be Danny Gray, the wide receiver from SMU. And round five, pick 165. So Cruiser and Ibra, appreciate you guys trying to get those votes in. Maybe Amari's going to be available in round seven. Fingers crossed, though, I doubt it. Danny Gray has already been brought in on a visit by the Silver and Black. Another Raiders coaching staff is excited about him. I've actually got to watch him play live since I do live here in Dallas, Texas. And he played at SMU, 5'11". 185 pounds. He's a long striding receiver. Like when he runs, his strides are unbelievable. He had 49 grabs last season, 803 yards, nine touchdowns for SMU. He also is a player who you want to try to stretch the seam with him, you can do that. I do agree with some people watching right now where he kind of reminds me of a Demarcus Robinson. He's not going to be better than Brian Edwards. He's not better than Demarcus Robinson. Right now, essentially, what you're trying to do is hopefully find a player that can materialize, become a better route runner as time goes on. But, Danny, if you do get drafted by the Raiders, I would love to have you on the Raiders report. I think it would be a pretty dope thing. I actually know a few people that are friends with Gray who live down here in Dallas. And uh, when I, as soon as I saw the name pop up, I was like, all right, man, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. But essentially what you got here is your – Six wide receiver on the Raiders uh, chart overall. At a combine, again, pro day numbers. Ran a 4.3340. Definitely a lot of speed there. 34-inch vert. Broad jump, 10 feet, 6 inches. Did not test on the bench. The three cone, not that great. The shuttle time, pretty solid. But it's the 40 time. Straight line speed is what you're going to get out of Danny Gray, the wide receiver from SMU. Which means this is going to technically be our... Mr. Irrelevant, okay? Mr. Irrelevant is round seven, pick 227. And I think it's funny, like, the first pick that we had, not as many supers. Y'all were battling over Danny Gray, so a lot, a lot of people wanted him. Uh, Terrence Miner said, too much tequila. John Doe said, what I missed. This is a fan-led mock. This is a mock draft where y'all get to decide. You get to decide the pick, so... By getting in your votes, by getting in the Super Chats, that's how you decide. So here we go. We're going to go through now until we get to round seven. Pick 227, so please hang tight. Please uh, just keep on watching the show and try to absorb as many of these names as humanly possible. That way you know who is still available come the Raiders pick. So you got Jalen McKenzie. He went off the board here. Brock Purdy quarterback going to compete down there in Houston D'Angelo Malone that's a hell of a steal there in terms of value uh, there goes Amari Barno round 6 186 to Chicago I think that's a really really good pick there for them you got coming in now Obinya Ezzi he's an offensive tackle prospect that we've talked about from TCU 
Josh Joby, the cornerback from Alabama, thought that's a really far spot for him to fall. I could actually see him going in round three. In terms of some names here, Max Mitchell, for him to go 203 overall, the offensive tackle from Louisiana, that's a very, very fall from far Fall far from grace. I swear I'll get it out sooner rather than later. Uh, in terms of the next round of picks here, some names that are sticking out to me. Neil Farrell Jr., uh, defensive tackle from LSU. That's really good value. Personally, I'm kind of mad that I didn't put him up on the last voting. We got Jack Sandberg. Okay, Micah McFadden. Not crazy about too many of the names there. Christopher Allen's a pretty solid edge rusher. Scott Nelson, round seven. Jack Cohn, glad because he stinks, which means the Raiders, they are on the clock. So I sent a list of names to Sam, and here are the best players available at 227. If you want the Raiders to go out and get the speedy cornerback from Baylor, type 28, Kalen Barnes. DeMarco Jackson, good linebacker here, type 29. Ryan Van DeMarc, I know graphic Raider would probably want him type 30. Tyson Anderson, 31. Darian Kendrick, 32. Thomas Booker, 33. Bo Melton, 34. 35 for Logan Bruss. And I'll be honest with you, I only picked Joey Blunt because of his name, and I knew it would be a fan favorite for Raider Nation. So go ahead and type 36. We also will go ahead and continue to tally these votes. But remember, y'all, we are going to be live for the 2022 NFL Draft over on Chat Sports. So if you haven't already subscribed to Chat Sports, please go ahead and do so. It's at the link that you see below, youtube.com slash chat sports tv live all three days all seven rounds we're going to get the picks before you see them on television it's going to be a lot a lot of fun y'all so if you haven't already subscribed to chat sports that's the link below we're also going to put it in the comments and in the description of today's video all right here are the best players available remember five dollar super chat ten dollar super chat to get those extra votes coming up lining up in here i would say the top two right now are for DeMarco Jackson and Thomas Booker. This is a two-way race between Thomas Booker and DeMarco Jackson. $5 Super Chat equals 50 votes. $10 Super Chat equals 125 votes. $20 Super Chat is 250. And if you just want to go and outright make the pick, send in a $100 Super Chat right now, and the pick is yours. Draft's over, pick's yours. So who do you guys want? The data team here is telling me that the Marco Jackson has about a 25 to 50 lead right now over Thomas Booker. And then after that, it's not all that close. The next closest would be Darian Kendrick. And if we're going to be real, I think actually the best prospect still left on the board might actually be Darian Kendrick, the cornerback from Georgia. Cameron Sproul says 33 from Thomas Booker. That's 50 votes now. He's got about a 21-vote lead, the team is telling me. 21-vote lead right now on the board here for Thomas Booker, the defensive tackle from Stanford. Keep on getting those votes in. We're going to let it go for another 30 seconds, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. Who do the Raiders take? Keep typing those 29s. It's getting close. We're about 10 votes away from DeMarco Jackson passing Thomas Booker. You guys can vote more than once. Friendly reminder, you can vote more than once. Okay, we got 15 seconds left. I've also just been told DeMarco Jackson now has officially passed Thomas Booker. So now the pick would be DeMarco Jackson. We got 10, 9, 8. Seven, six. Oh, there's a 28 for Kalen Barnes, and that's from, oh, wow. So hang on a second. We got to do the math here. Ibera, I am being told that even though you just sent in 125 votes, that's actually still not enough to catch up to DeMarco Jackson. So it's still DeMarco Jackson. Then it's the defensive tackle from Stanford, Thomas Booker, and then it's Kalen Barnes. So DeMarco Jackson still has the lead because we got so many votes that came in for DeMarco. Oh, Ryan, he's sending a five. It's definitely right now for DeMarco. So we're going to go ahead and put 20 more seconds on the clock here and count it down. 20 seconds remaining the pick as it stands right now. 
would be DeMarco Jackson. And in fact, Jackson has a pretty big lead right now over Stanford's defensive tackle, which is why everyone's typing 33. So 10 seconds remaining. Go back to the votes one more time for me, Sam. Oh, Alacron's going to type in 28 now for Barnes. So what I'm guessing now is the team's throwing in some votes. 29 from Daniel Topchi. Okay, so now it's clearly DeMarco Jackson. So I'm going to tell you all right now, DeMarco's got a big lead. We're going to count it down from five. Four, it's going to take at least a 20 for me extend the clock here. So if you wanted somebody else, it's going to take at least a 20 or it's going to take <laughs> 100. Big lead here for DeMarco Jackson. Five, four, three, two, one. The votes are in. They are finalized. Unless we get something here in the next few seconds, the pick is going to be DeMarco Jackson, the linebacker from Appalachian State and Fun fact, I did my very first mock draft I did for the Raiders before the Devontae Adam trade, I had the Raiders taking DeMarco Jackson in round five because I saw him as a good sideline to sideline linebacker. Yes, he's definitely undersized. However, I wouldn't take him in round five anymore. I think that this round seven or even he could be a potential UDFA signing would be pretty solid. He's got a lot of speed. He had 119 tackles. Last season at Appalachian State. Worst case scenario here, you're going to find a solid special teams player. And when you're drafting in round seven, if you can find a linebacker who's running the 4.55, who has a solid shuttle, who brings some good athletic ability, that's what you're looking for here. And ultimately, that's what the Raiders ended up getting. So here we go, y'all. Here was the Raiders fan-led mock. Shout out to Daniel Topchi. You were the MVP of today's show, and you're going to be pretty happy when I put out this fan-led mock. I'm going to probably do it on Wednesday, so please keep that in mind. So let's go. Get your votes in right now. I want you to go ahead and grade the mock draft A, B, C, D, or F. Coming up here on the Raiders Report, we are going to do one more mailbag. So keep that in mind. Get those questions coming in here. And uh, very, very interesting. Also, I am now reading that the Saints, excuse me, they didn't sign Jarvis Landry. He's just coming in for a visit. So just keep that in mind. Um, grade the mock draft, A, B, C, D, or F. Get those votes in right now and then. I think what we're going to do is give some shout-outs, and then we'll get everything going here for the mailbag. So some shout-outs here. Loner says A. Boomer Raider is going to go with a B. Tyler Garnett says D. C plus from Ryu, C from Joe, B man Vegas, he don't like it, he's going to give it an F. Bar 24 says C, Lori Lamp's going to go ahead and type B, LaToya going to go ahead and type D. All right, y'all, it is mailbag time, and shout out to everyone who's tuned in. I know it's been a little bit of a longer show, but you know what? I wanted to go ahead and do a fan-led mock draft. I think they're fun. I think it's also a cool way to get more versatile with y'all. So for the next, we'll say 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes, we'll do a shorter mailbag. 10 to 12 minutes, I'm going to be answering y'all's questions. So as always, send in those super chats. You can also go ahead and – hang on, i got to sneeze. I think i got to sneeze. Hang on. Oh, man, everyone type God bless you. <laughs> I got to try not to. Okay, I think I'm all right. I think I'm okay. All right, if you guys have a question or comment, you got to get on the show – Type hashtag Raiders, or you can go ahead and super chat and get those questions, comments on the show right now. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders board, and then make sure you are subscribed and make sure you got those notifications turned on because we're dropping a lot, a lot of videos here on the Raiders board. A brand new video every single day. And if you want to see your name shouted out on the Raiders board, try to be one of the very first people that are part of the Noti Gang. What's the Noti Gang? It's the people who are in the comments as soon as the video goes out. So shout out to Untouchable Raider, Junior, Raiderville 13, London Messer, and then S.A. Roderick. Y'all are the real ones. Turn on those notifications, click that bell, and subscribe. Let's go to Ryu. What up, brother? Malcolm Rodriguez is a slept-on linebacker that could be a UDFA. So linebacker from Oklahoma State and Personally, I don't really see this guy getting drafted, but yes, maybe he could be a UDFA. I'll also go ahead and say 
when I look at a lot of prospects, when I look at linebackers out of the Big 12, sometimes I pump the brakes on them because the tape is hard to get a good feel on them. I will say I am always a little bit more pleasantly surprised by Big 12 linebackers once they go to the NFL, surrounded by more defensive talent, good coaching, and less aired out offenses. Let's go to the flip side with Folk. Do you think the Raiders have a top five receiving core? If I'm looking at just the wide receivers, I'll say no. If I'm talking about the overall just like catching unit, like if I'm going to put Hunter Renfro, Darren Waller, Devontae Adams into that conversation, then I'll say yes. The only reason why I can't put them in the top five is because Devontae is great, Hunter Renfro is great, but Brian Edwards needs to take that step up. Demarcus Robinson needs to take that next step as well. Let's go to Ant EZ. A.J. Brown to leave the Titans out of his bio. Could the Raiders trade for him? I And I love this time of the year, y'all, because you always see crazy rumors like this pop up. A.J. Brown's not coming to the Raiders. And I know I'm probably going to make my title this mailbag, A.J. Brown trade related. It's not going to happen. A.J. Brown will not come to the Raiders. But if he does, we're going live. That I can almost guarantee you. Let's go to the next one. We got Robert says, we need three things to make our Super Bowl run. A right tackle, I agree. Wide receiver two and a honey badger. We're not done. Once the draft chips fall with many, we go big June first boost to finish the job. I agree. We need another right tackle. We need a solid wide receiver. I do think we need a little bit more depth at linebacker as well. And hell yeah, man, I'm, I'm all in on the honey badger if it can happen. But the number one offensive player that we need, or the number one free agent the Raiders need to go out and get, I'm telling you, it's Darrell Williams. That's your right tackle. What up, Lewis? Could you see the Raiders taking Jordan Davis in the draft? If he was available, I would love him, but Jordan Davis is probably going to be the very first defensive tackle off the board from Georgia. I don't see him escaping round one. And if he does, he'd be a player that I would consider trading up for. It's just it's uh, it's not going to happen. I know we're talking a lot about wide receivers early on in the show, so how about this? Raiders went out. They signed to Marcus Robinson in free agency. Who do you have more confidence in this year? Is it Brian Edwards type BA? Is it Demarcus Robinson type DR? The third year is usually known as the breakout year for receivers, so hopefully Edwards can take that next step. And if Edwards lives up to the hype and can be that dude that, I, I, that I've seen the tape of, then I will say the Raiders have a top five receiving unit. Let's go to Michael. Love the picture. What do you think about taking Kevin Austin Jr.? Kelvin Austin. You mean Kelvin Austin? I mean, Cal Calvin Austin's going to go, like, in the top three rounds. He's speedy receiver, definitely a little bit undersized. But, again, he's not going to be available in the seventh. So, realistically, the real question here is, do you take Calvin Austin Jr. Uh, in the third round? And, yes, I like the talent, but I also don't see him being available in the third round. I would rather have Sky Moore over Calvin, but uh, in seventh round, yes, of course. Let's go to Rami. What do you think it would take to trade for an early second in the 30 or 40 range. So, Rami, I would tell you to go ahead and look at my trade video that I did last week around five trades that the Raiders could do. And it's not just trying to figure out the exact trade because that's almost impossible. It's about showing y'all what it would probably cost to get up that high in the draft. So go ahead, check it out. I gave you a bunch of different ideas, and I gave you a few different trades to get up into the top 40. So, seriously, go check it out. If you guys are going to plan on watching the NFL draft, yo, there is one place to watch it and one place only. That's at Chat Sports. The link is below. YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Live all seven rounds, all three days. The picks are going to be here on YouTube before you see them on ESPN. That is for Just Win Babies. Believe it, baby. Join the team. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. That way, you know right when we go live. Let's go to Javier. It was wide receiver Calvin Austin supposedly ran a 4.03. No, he didn't. Uh... Some people might say that he ran certain things, but I saw 4.32. I'm going to believe what I saw. And to run a 4.03, somebody's juicing the clock. It's uh, not that it's physically impossible, but, I mean, you're talking about Usain Bolt at top speed type of speed. Like, no, Calvin Austin did not run a 4.03. If that happened, then I suppose he ran a 4.5. What up, Untouchable Raider? Thoughts on Christian Harris trading to the second could fall, and I heard we are getting some comp. So comp picks next year are definitely a possibility, and it's because some of the coaches that have been hired at some other spots, so that could happen. 
Thoughts on Christian Harris trading to the second? No. I, again, I don't see the Raiders going up into the second. So, And then in terms of the comp picks, it's why the Raiders might not do anything until after the draft because it might mess up some of their comp picks. So what about this, y'all? There's two rumors going around right now around A.J. Brown and even Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin, there's even some rumors around him potentially sitting out, and I like McLaurin a lot. He's actually one of my favorite wide receivers out there, and I get it. This is the Raiders report, but you know what? I like talking about big names as well. So, who's the better wide receiver, just from an NFL standpoint? Is it A.J. Brown, or is it Terry McLaurin? Type A-B, F-A-B, or T-M for McLaurin. Let's go to Ambitious Cowboy. Do you think the Raiders give up the third pick for draft capital? It depends who's available. Like, it's a shitty answer, but it's the God-honest truth. If there's certain players and if there's certain teams that want to trade up, if I was Las Vegas, I would be okay trading back because there's a lot of good depth in this year's class. And I would say the picks between 86 to 106 aren't really all that different. So if a team wants to move up, I'm okay with it. I'm cool with it. And if the Raiders want to go up to get a certain player that they have really, really high on their board, again, I'm okay with it. Let's go to Sal. You said no to A.J. Brown, but what about Terry McLaurin? Um, it's funny that you said that. I would say A.J. Brown is a better wide receiver if you're looking for a one. However, Terry McLaurin, I would make the argument, is a better fit with Derek Carr in this offense. Like, if you're telling me right now, ma'am, you can add Terry McLaurin next to Devontae Adams with Hunter Renfro and, and Darren Waller, this is the best offense in all of football. I believe McLaurin's going to end up getting his deal I mean, I've said a few times that if you put Terry McLaurin with the Buffalo Bills, he's Stephon Diggs. That's how talented I think McLaurin is. Well, let's go to Jersey. Uh, what is the possibility of the Raiders to get James Bradbury if he gets released? If he gets released, I'll say one of the top teams most likely to go out and get Bradbury will be the Raiders. And I still put this. If you were to tell me the top five teams most likely to go out and get him, the silver and black should absolutely be into that equation. Bradbury has a lot of connections with Patrick Graham, has good connections with some of our defensive backs coaches as well, and I know he fits the system, and the Raiders do need another corner. Not that I don't like Trayvon Mullen, but you got to face it. Bradbury and Rocky Sin would be a good cornerback duo in the AFC West, which is absolutely loaded. Now, guys, we get a lot, a lot of questions here on these shows, and we've been live on YouTube for almost two hours now, so we got a lot of questions. If I didn't get to your question... You can always hit me up on Locals. DM me at RaidersReport.Locals.com. That's the link. But I will check my DMs. I promise you, I promise you, I will check my DMs. Becoming a member is 100% free. And if you want to see a shout-out on future shows, I'm going to start giving more shout-outs to the members over on Locals because it's free to become a member. If you want even more exclusive content on top of all of that, then you can become a supporter. But shout out to these seven people here. I put out a post earlier in the week about, hey, if you shout out your area code, I'll go ahead and give you a shout out on the Raiders report. Locals is about putting more power in the hands of the watchers. So if that interests you, become a member, RaidersReport.Locals.com. Let's go to Aaron. Uh, Char What's up? Chargers was said to be a location for a trade for Debo Samuel. How much of a chance of this happening would it be? No. It's not going to happen, man. Uh, Debo Samuel's not coming to the Raiders. Sorry. Oh, Chargers. Wait, wait, Debo to the Chargers? Oh, okay. The Chargers, sorry. I I saw Raiders totally glance over the Chargers part. Debo's not going to get traded. And if he ends up getting traded, I would be really, really shocked about it. I mean, they got Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. They might decide to go all in. I just, honestly, I think if Debo goes anywhere, this might be a crazy thing to say. I think it's the Miami Dolphins. I think he just rejoins one of his old buddies and Mike McDaniel, who's now just creating an all-star team down there in Miami with their wide receivers. Let's go to our dog underscore 76. What is your best way of addressing right tackle, draft, or free agency, and who? It's right tackle, it's Daryl Williams, and it's not close to me. Not only do I want to go out and get a veteran at right tackle, it's because I want to make sure that the right tackle that I'm getting helps Alex Leatherwood materialize and helps him groom into being a solid right guard. That's why you go out, you get a solid right tackle, somebody like Darrell Williams. What up, Ryan? Uh, okay, do you want to trade for what you don't want to trade for a wide receiver? Excuse me. What about signing Jarvis Landry? So if you're depending on when you're watching this video, 
Jarvis Landry is visiting the Saints on Tuesday. So if he ends up going there, I'm sorry. If not, though, I mean, Jarvis would be another really good fit in this offense. The issue is this. I think the amount of money it's going to cost to go out and get Jarvis Landry is the same amount of money it's going to cost to get somebody like Darrell Williams. Darrell Williams is going to help out the team a lot more than somebody like Jarvis. But however, I'll ask you all, why for yes or <clears throat> and for no, should the Raiders go ahead and sign Jarvis Landry? Get those votes in. Should the Raiders go out and sign Jarvis Landry? Final question from Cameron Sproul. We gave a first and a second for Devontae. Would you give next year's first and second and our fifth and our two fifth rounders this year for Debo? Um, here's the issue. 49ers probably say no. I mean, if I was the 49ers and I saw what Tyree Kill went for and I saw what Devontae Adams went for, I would want first round picks this year. Like next year's first and a second probably isn't enough. So the 49ers would say no. I understand that would make this Raiders offense insane. But this might sound crazy. I'm probably going to say no, though, to this deal because there's only one football, and you can only give it around to so many people. So I'll say no. When is Raiders report throwing a first annual National Raider Nation cookout? It's a good question. I did plan on trying to get together with some Raider fans here in Dallas, and it is still something that I want to do. It's just we are busy, and if it does end up happening, it's either going to be in May, June, or July. Those are usually our down times. But I'll make you a deal. If you live in the Dallas area, I promise you if we end up doing a cookout, if we end up just doing something, a little get-together at a restaurant or something like that, I'll let you all know. That way we can end up doing it. So, Ambitious Cowboy, that sounds good to you, and hopefully everyone can go ahead and they can join in. All right, y'all, we're getting ready now to end the live show. Appreciate everyone who tuned in. We're going to give some shout-outs to the people that had some votes coming in here around Jarvis Landry, and then I'm going to end the show. We are not going to send this to loop because I don't want, you know, the fan-led mock draft to confuse anyone. So as soon as this show is over, it's done. We're going to end it. I appreciate everyone who tuned in. Should the Raiders go out and get Jarvis Landry, Derek, Jason, Daniel, Topchi, shout-out to you, Daniel, all typing those no's. Getting a lot more no's than somebody's typing FKC. I'm always okay for FKC's. Now, guys, remember, we go live every Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Appreciate everyone who tuned in. Appreciate everyone who participated in our fan-led mock draft. What you're going to see later on tonight is I'll release our rumors cut. Then tomorrow is going to be our fan-led mock draft. Another video on Thursday. And if anything big happens, you know we're going to be going live. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on those notifications. And I want everyone to enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Make sure you tell your loved ones that you care about them. And make sure you tune in tomorrow for our Raiders fan-led mock draft.